So, you found out what not to wear, did a Lolita episode. Welcome back, Frill Nation, to another episode of OK Bloomer. This is a very special episode discussing the 2005 episode of What Not to Wear. This is not going to be a react video. Lots of people have already reacted to it, so I'm not going to just retread old ground. If you want, I recommend the Stitches reaction to it. That's kind of the most recent one, and it's kind of what kicked off the idea for this video, as well as the ensuing discussion in Ruffle Chat, because people were... <laughs> they were shook about this episode and when it came out. So the episode in question of what not to wear, um, it aired in July of 2005. So kind of a while ago. And it featured a young lady named Courtney. Editing room bloomer here. I got my episodes mixed up when I was looking up to see which episode this was. Um... I keep calling her Courtney. Her name is not Courtney. Her name is Lexa. I'm very sorry about that. I looked up the wrong episode information because I'm an idiot who can't use Google. So, yeah, her name was Lexa. The episode specifically aired in 2009, not 2005. <laughs> and... Oh, God, this is why we do research first. And, yeah, but still... Everything else in this video is a, a valid point, so. Who was apparently wearing Lolita style at work, and her co-workers actually had her sign on to the show. And she went on and she got the Stacy and, what's his name, Chad? Clinton. Ugh. Uh, she got the Stacy and Clinton talk-down treatment, and she got, you know, the generic businesswoman wash over and everything worked out great the end and i think the reason that this episode horrifies lolitas in particular is because the whole key premise of what not to wear is that they go for the shock value of throwing out all of your old clothes because they're disgusting and have no value anymore water break and i think this horrifies people for a few reasons one namely because that's such a huge waste to just throw out someone's entire collection of clothing, which we'll get to in a minute. And also, we really have an emotional attachment to clothes. And to see something like that, where someone really takes something with meaning and value and chucks it into the trash, like it rips a little bit of your soul out. Even if it's not happening to you, if you have empathy towards that person where it's happening to them, you do have a reaction to it. And especially for us, when this fashion is already kind of I don't want to say vilified, but stereotyped and, you know, looked down upon poorly simply because of the name. Uh, that does, I think, affect us a little bit more than we're willing to admit. So when this episode premiered, um, LiveJournal kind of blew up because of course they did. Obviously, no one really had a lot of brand, so people were horrified enough because they were going to throw out all of her brand and people were really upset with that. On top of it as well, she only gets $5,000 for a new wardrobe, which in theory could get you quite a bit of decent pieces, but I'm pretty sure that the way they do it is the money is more of like a gift card or agreement situation, usually with a higher end retailer. It's not going to stretch as far with Banana Republic as it would maybe uh, an Old Navy. And I know there is a huge, ironically they're the same company, but there is still a huge quality disparity there. But still, if you're just trying to figure out who you are and now all of all of your clothes have been thrown out and discarded, you may need to get a few things back in place. So let's tackle some of the concerns people had watching this episode. The general attitudes towards alternative fashion were a lot different. The general attitudes towards nerd fashion and alternative culture was way different. I mean, nerds were still nerds back then. Nerds weren't cool yet. And uh, you didn't have celebrities going to comic cons unless they were guests yet. You know, maybe you did, but they kept it on the DL. Like, no one blew it up like, oh my god, Vin Diesel is going to comic con. Oh, that's so amazing. So no, instead what you had was, you had a lot more shame about it. 
This was also kind of coming off the heels of a lot of popular media that centered around From Hottie to Naughty. There was literally a movie called From Hottie to Naughty, which I... Why do I feel like Paris Hilton was in it? And it was very much about having to force, usually a woman, force her to change who she was to get a man or to please societal standards or something. You had She's All That. Miss Congeniality, which kind of played on that idea, but it was, you know, to go undercover, doing this sort of culture swap of the inelegant kind of rough and tumble woman played by Sandra Bullock getting through to these pageant queens and, you know, teaching them that it's okay to have fun and eat carbs. Come on, come on, midnight snack with me and uh, some girl talk. Come on. Are you crazy? We can't have pizza and beer. Do you know how many calories? So they taught her how to walk in high heels and apply cosmetics. And the closest you usually get to a man's transformation in these kind of movies is that he becomes less of a douche. And she's all that. It was literally Freddie Prince Jr.'s character learning that, hmm, maybe art has value because his love interest slash uh, victim uh Lainey Boggs had you know she was an art student so she was weird kind of a nerd and she wore glasses and painted overalls oh, oh. well bombs away oh no 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 oh. anyone but her not Janie Briggs oh. Oh. guys she's got glasses and a ponytail oh. Oh, look at that. She's got paint on her overalls. What is that, guys? There's no way she could be prom queen. And it's interesting how it's very much about forcing a woman to conform. It's always that. It's taking a woman who doesn't wear what we want her to and forcing her to conform to an arm. So, and you also had, coming off the heels, it was a TLC show, so you already know. It's like, eh. You had Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, which originally ran around that time. Yeah. So you had Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, and you had What Not to Wear. And they kind of premiered at the same time. Oh, it was also based off... Of course it was American ripoff of a British series. Of course it was. Why, why, would, why wouldn't it be? So you had this idea of, you know, we're mean to you because we love you and we want what's best for you. And if we give you this tough love then you'll just, you know, be a better person and that will make us happy. And that's what it's all about, is making external people happy instead of living for your own truth. So the basic premise of this episode was that this young woman worked, I believe, for an EMT service. So she was a dispatcher and she was trying to wear Lolita to work. 90% of the time, you cannot wear this fashion at work for a lot of reasons. It's impractical. Uh, you may work a job that requires a specific uniform. If you are client-facing, you have to maintain a certain level of mundane professionalism, I will call it. And client could be anything from cutting business deals to working with the general public. Um, so you may have a work uniform that you have to wear that signifies you as an employee. And let's be honest, if you're on your feet all day, you really want to be running around in tea parties or rocking horseshoes. A lot of times, too, it's a, it's a safety issue. We have hard enough time getting through doorways with petticoats, let alone if you were a waitress or something like that. It's just the majority of the time, Lolita is not practical for work. It's an alternative fashion. It's valid, but it should be worn where it's appropriate. I do actually have a few girls in my com who are able to wear Lolita to work, which is fantastic. However, they more ride the line of Lolita and Otome. So they keep it a little bit more toned down. They don't go quite as crazy with it. You know, they're not wearing over-the-top suite. They're usually wearing toned-down classic. Otome, they might lean a little gothic. They keep it, you know, professional because ultimately professionalism is more important to a job than getting to express yourself. And that's sort of the thing that needed to be addressed was that what she was wearing wasn't really professional for her job and when you're wanting to be taken seriously in a job generally starting out in the lead of fashion really isn't the way to begin it 
So the next thing that a lot of people have issue with is, oh my god, they threw out all of her Lolita clothes. My entire wardrobe is more than five grand. She'll never be able to get that back. So there's a few things. First, like, calm. I know it never helped. Calm down. Take a breath. It's okay. First off, when they do the whole throwing out their clothes thing, they could go back and pick pieces back out. Like, the show isn't, they do it for the drama. They do it for the effect and the shock of, oh, my God, it's gone. It's going away. When in, when in reality, they're allowed to go back to the pile of discards and pick out what they want to keep. I'm not sure if they're limited, but it's definitely like a, hey, we get it. Like, maybe this is, like, your favorite sweater, or maybe this is a piece that's really hard to find, or, you know, you have an emotional attachment that reminds you of someone it was you know, a gift from a dear friend who isn't with you anymore, something like that. So they weren't complete monsters. It was all made up for television. And on top of it, when we say they threw out her whole wardrobe, she had maybe four things in her wardrobe. She didn't have, you know, she didn't have Puppet Circus or anything. She didn't have Iron Gate original release. She didn't have super rare, hard to find pieces. I think the main brand piece she had was a metamorphosed Luffy pack dress that you actually see her wearing in the opening reel, showing her in inappropriate clothes. So it's not like they were really throwing out things that she couldn't reasonably replace or find better of. I mean, it still sucks, but it's not like she had, you know, some sort of walk-in closet dream fest of dresses and prints she had like a few items and they were rather cheap items not in construction just in value so yeah like don't freak out like it's okay i get it because you and i think we freak out because we put ourselves in her shoes and think if someone came to my house and threw out all of my lolita closet um i'd be going to jail because a lot of my shit I can't replace. A lot of my shit I made myself. Like the dress I'm wearing right now, I made myself. And so if someone came along and was like, oh, I don't like it, I'm throwing it out. Um, yeah, I'm getting my knives out. Like there's no... So she was allowed to regather pieces and it was no harm, no foul. The other problem that a lot of people have with what not to wear is during the show's run, it ran from 2003 to 2013, Jesus, is that... They never really embraced anyone's style. Let's break down what TLC is first. TLC is a garbage channel. Most most cable channels are garbage now. They just It's just how they are. And TLC was kind of just, you know, it was picking up a thread from all those talk shows in the 90s that did like, my child dresses like a slut and I don't like it, blah, 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 kind of bullshit where it goes for the shock value of changing someone to fit the generalized societal expectations of them. And I think it finally fizzled out in 2013 because basically all they were doing was saying, stop wearing your pleather mini skirts, stop wearing your gothic fashion, stop wearing this, stop wearing that. For the most part, it was just basically taking someone who already had a style they liked, but other people didn't like on them and forcing them to get generic bullshit. Also, they could never dress plus size women. It was always like sad paisley tunic tops. And as a plus size woman, like, fuck paisley and fuck tunic tops, all right? Like, I don't know why it's so hard for you to dress plus size women. I don't know why it's so hard to, like, I kind of get it, like, eh, if you're plus size, maybe you have big titties, maybe you don't, I don't know. But give us something. Give us something besides bullshit that you give us all the time. Like, I go to Lane Bryant for bras and that's it. Because first off, I'm not paying 70 fucking dollars for a pair of jeans when my ass is small enough that I can just go to goddamn Old Navy and buy clearance ones for 20 bucks, all right? First off. Second off, their clothes just age you instantly. And it's already, when you're plus size, you do end up looking a lot older than you are. I've seen like transformation pictures and people who lose a ton of weight, they look younger in the pictures of them after losing all of the weight. So you already look, like, puffier and older because you're plus size. Like, why the fuck do I want to dress like a 50-year-old, like, cat lady? I'm not there yet. Give me, like, 15 more years and then I'll be there. But for now, you just let me wear whatever the fuck I want. And that's the real secret. Wear whatever the fuck you want. So, this episode aired. And people 
they lost their fucking minds. And then after like a couple of days, people kind of chilled out and were like, okay, she didn't really have that big of a collection. Like, none of us had a big collection, so I don't, you know, it was just the collective, like, how dare you? And I think really the bigger problem with the show is how they treat people. And I get that it was scripted and it was kind of, I don't want to say it's what she signed on for, but you do sign an agreement like, hey, they're going to kind of be a little bit of dicks to you. It's just the show. It's just how it is. I think the main problem with the show and why it was so incendiary for a lot of alternative fashion people was that it wasn't necessarily the, I don't want to say contestant, it was, fuck it. It wasn't necessarily the victim's idea to go on. For example, the young lady in this episode, it was her coworkers who were like, may have egged her on, like, you should sign up to be on what not to wear, or might have, you know, volunteered her as tribute or something. It's different if it's someone coming in like, you know, what, I, I don't know how to dress myself, essentially. Maybe they went to private schools where they wore uniforms the entire time. Maybe they just, I don't know, never really got to experiment a lot with fashion. Maybe they just kind of, you know, they just want to shake things up and try something new. So instead of eat, pray, loving it, they're just, you know, they just want to try some new clothes. They're not really sure what's going to work on them. And I think especially when you are a plus size Lolita too, that is a huge issue because it's hard to fit things. She's not plus size. She just, you know, she's just new. And so, yeah, if the show had stayed more towards that sort of actually educational where they say, okay, well, let's, let's go to the mall and try on a bunch of stuff, which, if there is a hell, that's kind of my hell, is to go to the mall with other people who want me to try clothes on for hours. That is kind of my hell, is trying on clothes for hours for other people. But... If they had done that, like, you know, do you know kind of things you like? Can you create a mood board or <laughs> white nonsense or something like that? You know, show us some examples. Let's look through some magazines or some pictures, something, and get kind of an idea of what catches your attention. Let's look at a color palette and kind of compare and contrast with your skin tones and see what actually works. Like, you know, do you have olive skin tones where maybe nice deep oranges and greens will work really well for you. Do you have cooler undertones? Should we avoid, you know, bits of gold? What really attracts you? Do you, you know, do you like to play with texture at all? Things like that. If the show had been geared more towards that, where it was literally taking young women who, and men, who hadn't had a lot of experience with dressing themselves, knowing what to buy, and just wanted to break the mold of whatever they had been wearing, whether it was school uniforms or, you know, just jeans and a t-shirt, wanting to branch out a little bit and self-express a little more, I think it would have been more well-received in general. And I say it wasn't well-received, but it ran for like 10 fucking years. So, and I think it's because, unfortunately, as a collective, we, we like to watch others fail not only because it makes us feel better about our own failures, but also because we want to learn from that failure without taking on any of the risk ourselves. And I think a lot of those shows like Hoarders, and even Intervention or My Strange Addiction, we need to see others do bad or at least be changed so that we can create change for ourselves. In a way, it, it, it wants to sound hopeful, but a lot of times these shows didn't have a sympathetic form of change. They had, you know, the whole dump it all, it's trash, it's garbage. And we have to remember, too, that basically everyone's initial reaction to Lolita fashion is a what the fuck is that? Uh, it's still a constant topic with you know, young women, high school girls, anyone stuck still living with their parents to say, my parents don't like Lolita fashion. They don't want me wearing it. Like, how do I get around this? Blah, blah, blah. And the answer is you might not for a while, or you may have to start tone down and just, you know, just like push the boundaries a little bit. 
Because on the surface, the basic description of it, to be more modest, more feminine, more covered, it's like, shouldn't that be like every parent's ideal? Because we still have to project this, you know, this concept of virginity from our daughters. Like we're so insecure about our daughters being sexual beings that they still have to be covered up. We still have to protect them. And I really should have written the script instead of just going off the cuff. And so when young women start to branch out, especially in their teens, and parents get scared of that and they say, why can't you just still dress like my little girl? Why can't I just dress you up like a little doll? I remember my mom had kind of a hard time when I was a teenager and she could no longer dress me up like her little princess doll. She could no longer, you know, pick out my first day of school outfits. Who gives a fuck? It's school. Like, I'm not here to impress anyone. I went to school with like the same 200 people for like 12 fucking years. Like, it, it, no one cares. She would do these little things like she loved going shopping and she would get like, God, she would buy me like themed turtlenecks. I hate, I hate turtlenecks. I hate, it's ironic because right now I'm wearing a cross strap dress. So of course it's like hugging a little bit on my neck, but I can like kind of control it. And you know, it's not super tight. Whereas a turtleneck is like, hi, I'm going to be a noose of bad choices around your throat all day. Like, pop a scratchy wool sweater over that bitch, too, and you're set. 90s was a dark time in fashion. Thank God for Jinko jeans. Jinko jeans and bondage pants were... <laughs> they were the rock bottom of 90s fashion. <laughs> that was us totally giving up and just being like, you know what? Fuck it. My pants are a tent. Your argument is invalid. So, at its core, that was the main issues with the episode. Was that they were throwing out Oliver Brand, which can have a lot of calm your tits. And I would say a bigger issue was definitely kind of how they spoke to her and didn't work with her, really. And it's something that the Stitches points out quite a bit, is she says, I want more modest, I want more coverage. And they're like, but you need a man... So you got to be a little sexier. She's like, I don't want to be sexy. And that's valid is to not want to be sexy and to want to be a little bit more covered up. But that's the major flaw with the show is that instead of actually like getting ideas from what they want and then being able to go to different stores instead of, you know, the one boutique that lent them store credit or whatever, they... We're stuck just going to the same one and that's why everyone kind of just looked like a sad paisley mess that had no individuality to them so at its core lolita like the general description of it sounds perfect for parents it's you know it's a little bit more modest it's more feminine it's more covered up but then they see it and they see that it's not just simple blouses and skirts and things it's a little more dramatic than that to be honest that's kind of the best descriptor I have. It's a little more dramatic than just that. And I think, too, their concern comes from a place of, you know, wanting to be a sexy schoolgirl. And yeah, I do think that their attitude was kind of a problem because they were so dismissive of the fashion outright. I know it's outlandish and it's unexpected. And when you first start showing it to people, they can't. They can't comprehend it. Like, their brain kind of locks up, even if you're, like, one person walking around alone. Like, people's brains kind of lock up, and that's why they end up saying really dumb shit to you all the time. Unlike when you go in a group, and I've touched on this before, when you go in a group and everyone kind of goes, oh, there must be something going on. I don't know why, but there's something about the singularity, the lone Lolita walking around. People go, mm, which is kind of weird, there must be something wrong. To when they see a collective, they're like, okay, this must be like a thing. Like it clicks in their head when they see, what's the term we want? Who's gaggle before? A, f a ruffle, a ruffle of Lolita's. So when you see a full ruffle going around, people kind of go, oh, this this must be something. It's like a, like a play or a performance or some shit. The episode is kind of upsetting just in how they talk to her and how they... A lot of the things the Stitches points out, how they kind of dismiss what she's asking for. She wants to see what works for herself and what looks professional, but still compliments her while also making her feel comfortable. Because people can tell when you're not comfortable in your outfit, like me fucking with my sleeves throughout this whole thing. People can tell when 
you just when you're itchy and you're uncomfortable and your bra is digging into your fucking rib cage, they can tell, you know, they can tell through your body language. Whereas when you're wearing something that you really love that you feel amazing in, people can tell that too. And you you're happier happier overall. You're in a better mood overall. And why they couldn't have taken that route with it, where they actually say, Okay, uh, we've got five thousand dollars to do a shopping spree, let's kinda go around to a few different shops. Let's see what we can find. Well, they couldn't have gone that route with it instead of just, well, here's the store that the production studio worked out a deal with for advertisements. So let's just go there and, you know, find the closest things we can to what you want to wear. And that was kind of a missed opportunity for that show as a whole. And I know it would have been as dramatic and shocking because that's really TLC's focus is, you know, the drama of throwing out the clothes and the, you know, the sort of bitchy gay stereotype for Clinton and the just general like bitchy best friend who wants to actually help you conform stereotype that they leaned on for Stacy. Um, they cared more about the shock value of throwing people's clothes out and forcing a dramatic transformation, which basically is like a reverse Superman that they pulled on everyone where they forced who you really are under a veil of paisley and cigarette pants. But yes, this episode aired a long ass time ago, and I be- I'm I think Courtney did continue to wear Lolita fashion on the DL, like, which is also an important thing to take away is you can wear different things for different events. Like you can figure out what is and is not appropriate. Uh, would Lolita be appropriate for a wedding? Only if you ask the bride. Ask the bride first if you're not sure. Send her a picture. And for the love of God, if she says it's okay, like, make sure you're either wearing exactly what's in the picture that she okayed or send her a picture of her outfit like six months before the wedding. And I'm not shitting you because if you try to do it a week before, she will lose her goddamn mind on you. Send it to her like six months out. Or if you're still really not sure and the bride hasn't really said anything, just don't. Just don't do it. Definitely don't wear a white dress and just don't do it if you're really not sure. Like you can set it aside to be respectful to another person for a day and wear something toned down. And that's definitely where the balance comes in, in wearing alternative fashion and being an alternative person and still functioning in society at whole, is knowing when you can and cannot wear it. So as I mentioned earlier, some of the girls in my com who do wear Lolita fashion at work, they obviously have gotten their supervisors okay for it. They're obviously keeping it tailored to the dress code of work in general. They're not going over the top with it. They're not wearing, you know, a wig and 16 hair clips and bunny ears and carrying around a fucking usakumiya and all that shit. They're keeping it tailored and professional to the job. And anyone else, that's what it's really about. Would you wear Lolita to a funeral? Don't. Unless you you knew the person who passed and they were they would be cool about it. Like Jesus, just don't like read the fucking room. Know when and when it isn't appropriate. And I know that there's always like a testing ground to figure out when it is and is not appropriate. And it's always hard to know when. And it feels frustrating that you spend all this money on a big wardrobe or you work and build these complex pieces for your wardrobe and then it feels like you can only wear them like a couple times a month. I get that that feels very frustrating and stifling and you want to wear it more because you really enjoy it and it makes you happy. And I'm telling you, like, trust me, just read the room, ask if you have to, but in general, it's just, it's not a good idea to wear Lolita in professional settings. That's kind of where this rant is going, I guess. So definitely know how to read the room and pay attention. And if your boss says something, like, mm, don't. Just don't do it. And just be like, hey, sorry, just trying something new. Generally, most most employers will at least be kind of cool about that sort of thing. Some won't. And just some are pain in the ass. If you're working at McDonald's, don't. Like, come on, you're smarter than that. I know you are. Don't fucking try to wear Lolita at McDonald's. First off, your shoes are probably not slip proof, so you're going to bust your ass falling on that nasty kitchen floor. I worked at a McDonald's for a summer in college, and even with the non-slip work shoes, you still slid all over that goddamn floor because it was so greasy. And they washed the floor every night. Every night with the hot 
water and soap, like proper actual cleaning. And it still got so greasy and slimy in there. <laughs> McDonald's is still good though. And so you will, you will bust your ass falling. And it's entirely about dressing appropriately, knowing when you can and can't wear it. So for example, right now on the weekends, if that's what you want to wear or on your weekend, if it happens to be sort of a, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday sort of thing. Yeah, go right for it. You want to run errands in Lolita? I just came back from seeing a couple friends and I stopped in Aldi and picked up some things. And, you know, that wasn't a problem. It's not like Aldi's going to be like, girl, hold on. No one's going to care. But in a work setting, I would never wear this to work. First off, because I do have a dress code at work. I do have um, polos and dress pants that I'm required to wear. Um, but even at a job where I was more of a front facing, I, I wouldn't wear it. It's not appropriate. It's not comfortable. And it's just not the time and place for it. And so that's something you really need to think about, especially when you are coming up as a young professional. It's okay to have more than one wardrobe. I Essentially, I have two closets going. I have my Lolita closet and I have my Normie closet. So that's for things like jeans and t-shirts when it's a casual day, um, my work clothes, some formal wear that isn't Lolita, like very little because sometimes I want to dress formal but I don't want to be like Lolita fancy, you know. I save this for the people I care about. I save this for people who are closest to me and know. And so it's okay and it's acceptable to have multiple wardrobes for even the mood you're in or for what you have planned that day. You don't have to be stuck in a rut of just wearing one thing day in and day out simply because, you know, you feel like that's all you can do. That's kind of the beautiful thing is that you can be whoever you want to on your own time. And that's something that you have to remember and really look forward to. Can you wear Lolita to college? Like college classes? I mean, you might a few times. I did at least once. Oh, God. Yeah. That was a bad idea. I was still learning. But I did at least once for like a speech class. I think I was giving a speech on it. It was either on, either on ghosts or sewing. And I definitely wore Lolita because... The rest of college, I wore like sweatpants and I was an art major, which is why I'm a broke bitch. And, you know, you're going to get paint on shit. So I just kind of dressed comfortable so that I could focus and do my art shit. So you can, but again, it's about, you got to think about it for a second and say, is this really the time and the place to wear it? And unfortunately for Courtney in that video, um, her job was not the time and the place to wear Lolita. It may have been... Well, your dispatch, your phones only, so it's not like we really have hard and fast rules, but at the same time, they were like, at least dress a little bit nicer. I believe she was EMT dispatch, I might be wrong. Maybe they were just dicks, I don't know. On the bright side, though, now, uh, what was it, 15 years after this episode aired, there was a recent interview with Stacy from the show, and The Stitches also did a review on this interview, where she sort of laments that they couldn't have done what would have been nice was to actually work with people and understand what they wanted to achieve and what their style was and maybe what they were hoping to go for. And it's really refreshing to see that she sort of embraced the whole, you know, fuck it, I'm going to dress how I want because we only get one life sort of uh, general vibe. Because that's important too. Yes, you may still have to dress professionally for work. And yes, Lolita isn't always professional uh, or, you know, Ad well advised for certain social situations it has its time and place and it's about sorting out what that time and place is for you personally and when it's acceptable and when it's maybe not that I think a lot of people maybe have to work on it's never funny to see how people talk to alternative fashionistas it's never pleasant because it does feel very personal so generally, wear what you love, but know when it's appropriate to wear it and when it's not. That's the key thing here, is to be smart about when to wear it. Do you want to wear Lolita 
you know, just going out, going out shopping. Okay, that's fine. Do it. Like, who cares? You can. And it can be a fun little way to kind of jazz up your day. But should you wear Lolita all of the time to work, if it allows it, and it's practical enough for work, if you're able to tone it down in some way that keeps it professional, or even if you just wear a few small pieces, you don't have to go full glam. Maybe you want to get more use out of that $80 baby necklace that you bought on Impulse because you were having a bad day. I don't know. Yeah, if you can rock it with some normie clothes, then wear it with your normie clothes. If you want to just keep everything casual, keep everything casual. I, 90% of the time, if I'm going out, I'm wearing jeans and a t-shirt because I just want to be dressed quick. When I'm at home, I'm in pajamas because that's the most comfortable I am. Maybe maybe I'm too casual of a Lolita because I'm not a lifestyler and I wear it so little, but that's my business. I am definitely not going to wear this to work. It's not appropriate and it's not what's asked of me. And I would only wear this to a wedding if the bride said it was okay. Do I think the young lady in the What Not to Wear episode could wear Lolita at her job now? I, I don't know. I think if she was able to get more passable normie pieces, yes, she very well could. Could she wear a baby blouse with her generic uh, editorial pants or cigarette pants that go by two names. I don't know why. Uh, yeah. Yeah, she very well could, depending on the blouse and its construction. So there's always ways to still represent who you really are at heart while also still following the expectations of professionalism. And it's tricky and it's a fine line and it might take a little experimentation, but there there are ways to do it. But if your boss frowns upon it, then just... He's off. You're not less of a Lolita for not being able to wear it at work. You're not less of a Lolita for, you know, wearing jeans and a t-shirt or having a job that has a dress code or a uniform. We joke a lot about being a Lolita at heart, but, you know, if it is who you really are and it is who you want to be, then do it on the weekends. You, that's when you have your free time anyway. Do it on your free time. Do it on your off days. Even if you're not going to anything, and even if you're just running errands for the day, you have pictures like that all the time on Instagram and Closet of Frills. It's just, hey, just had to pop around to the shops today, so I thought I'd, you know, get a little dolled up for it. And that's how you can still be a Lolita and still be a professional. In short, it it is still an upsetting episode. It's upsetting how they talk to her and how they kind of downplay how she wants to dress and who she wants to be thematically. But the reality of it is that while Lolita is not always professional, um, there are ways to get around that. And she's still free to be herself. It's not like she had to sign a contract saying that she would never wear a Lolita fashion again in her life, regardless of anything. So you always have that option too. You can always wear a Lolita no matter who you are, no matter how old you are or young you are. And that's something to keep in mind. Just be yourself, but know when you need to be professional. And that's the fine line there. I understand you're upset about the episode. It is still kind of upsetting to watch it and remember. And what you have to remember is that TLC overblows everything. Like, Everything is super dramatic. Just makes me want to set myself on fire. You don't have to subject yourself to the approval of a TV show that's been off the air for seven years. Oh wait, should they bring that back? You don't have to subject yourself to that. And you don't have to assume that the world is against you just because you like frilly dresses. Like, it's going to be against you for a lot of other reasons besides just that. Trust me. So wear what you want, but know when it's okay to wear it, and know when it's okay to not. And understand that not being able to dress Lolita at work is fine. It doesn't make you less of a Lolita. So that wraps up another episode of OK Bloomer. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on this trip down memory lane. I hope you learned some things. I hope I didn't ramble too much and lose uh, discussion threads too much. I might have a little bit. I apologize. If you want to watch the episode, I believe it is available on TLC. I'm not sure how you can actually watch it. Um, you may need to go to a certain bay with certain 
scallywags and swashbucklers. Or maybe you have a crazy friend who still has all of what not to wear TiVo'd from, you know, the last 15 years. And you can just kind of sneak over there and watch it or something. Or just watch the stitches uh, react to it. Like I said, there's a reason why I didn't do a react. Because everyone does a fucking react. And you don't need to see me pound out the same points that she had. Uh, do you wear Lolita at work? Are you allowed to? Do you wear little pieces? Things like that. Maybe just earrings, necklace, etc. Uh, let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more ramblings from me, like and subscribe. I know I said in the beginning I wanted to upload bi-monthly, and unfortunately with me being back at work and with me also working on some side projects, that has become more of like once a month, every other month, hopefully not every other month, once a month. I'm just, I'm busy, man. I got shit going on, and it's not like this is my livelihood, so... I'll do my best. If there's anything you want to see in future episodes, leave a comment. Let me know. I have a Patreon. I don't give a shit. It's Patreon. Like, I'm, I'm doing fine. Be safe. Wash your hands. And take care. Who wants to see me just sit here and surf Facebook without you saying that?